15% of Canadian women suffer from postpartum depression and their children are at a six-fold increased risk of developing depression themselves. What's more, we see the first signs of these children's depression as young as an in infancy. Specifically, they show elevated reactivity of the stress hormone called cortisol. Now this will stay high throughout development and underlie a depressive episode later in life. So why do these infants show elevated stress hormone release? Well, mothers with depression are less able to parent sensitively, thus stressing their infants out, leading to stress hormone release. Genes play a role too. Specifically, a bad variant of a gene called DRD2 has been linked to elevated stress hormone release in infancy and the later development of depression. But then I thought, well, that's pretty negative. Why do we think of this genetic variant as bad, as a risk? Surely it wouldn't have been maintained through natural selection if it were only bad. And that is the question that led to my thesis. So I looked at the depressive symptoms of 314 new moms. I looked at their infant's cheek cells to assess for genetic characteristics. And I looked at their infant's saliva to assess for stress hormone release following a mild stressor in which the infant was repeatedly denied access to an attractive toy. So as you can see on this graph, what I found was that infants with the bad variant of the DRD2 gene did show the highest stress hormone release if the mother was high in depression, but they also showed the lowest stress hormone release if the mother was low in depression. So that's our answer there. This variant of the DRD2 gene is not bad. Rather, it reflects susceptibility. So infants with this variant do the worst in a negative environment, but they also do the best in a positive environment. What's more, I replicated my results with two other genes linked to the development of depression. So my research is fascinating because it fundamentally changes the way that we think about genetic vulnerability to depression. And it tells us that if we intervene with mother's symptoms of postpartum depression, then even infants at genetic risk for depression will not only survive, they can thrive. Thank you.